What's up, guys? Your girl Sakina, and I'm back with another review. This is my review for Love Is Blind UK. This is season one, episodes nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, we're gonna put all of it together, and we're just gonna finish it out. So let's go ahead and get into it. Nicole and Benny Hanna. She's getting ready to meet his family. She got the jitter. She's real nervous. And he lets her know, hey, uh, when I left the pods, I went to Germany. And I was in shambles. So my family got to see the aftermath of us breaking up. And so she has to be prepared for that. Because, of course, his family was not happy to see him in that state. They just might bring that up. So the family gets there. And it's obviously an awkward feeling in the room when they got to the table to eat. His mom and his sister barely even made eye contact with her initially. And I was like, ooh, this is a little awkward to watch for myself. So his mom gets emotional about him coming to visit them. And she said that he couldn't eat, he couldn't talk. Like, they had never seen him like that before. And so he did a lot of questioning on whether or not he did the right thing. Now, Nicole apologizes. I can't remember what she apologized for exactly, but she did. And she said that she definitely made the wrong decision. So they wanted to know about her past. And she tells them that she did get married. Uh, she was single. I think the divorce might have been three years prior. And she spent those three years trying to get herself together. And so Benaya and Nicole, they do admit that they argue. And that is a result of Benaya's disdain that he has for Sam. Now, Nicole said that she knows that she connected with Sam in the pods and what she felt for him was real, but she left that in the past. So since she's leaving him in the past, his sister feels like, okay, well, Benaya, you need to leave Sam in the past too. Hello, we've been saying that. The family, they actually like them together. They said they never seen Benaya act this way towards a woman. And so they are feeling him. And the mama says, yes, she definitely gets the okay and the approval. Catherine and Freddie, child. So he meets Catherine's friends and they want to know, are y'all ready to get married or do y'all feel like there's some things that y'all need to work on first? Now, Freddie did say that he was ready to get married, but he does have some doubts on their differences and their personalities. Again, he's a homebody. She wants to go out to certain places and he thinks that she's high maintenance. And he feels like he may not be able to satisfy her based on what she truly wants. And so she gets defensive, of course, because she's like, I mean, I've been displaying, um, you know, a, a different behavior. And for you to think that I'm just this materialistic person, how dare you? She claims to only live this lifestyle when she's going on trips with her friends and all of this stuff. But Freddie thinks that she's high maintenance. I feel like he spent, uh, you know, some time with you to kind of, get that get that feeling and then also ollie in the pod to asked her about her lifestyle and certain things that she does for her birthday and all of that where she likes to hang out and he too said that those places were very pretentious so you might be high maintenance you might want to live a certain lifestyle and that's okay i don't feel like you should try to prove yourself otherwise just so you can stay with freddie he gets up and he goes and gets them a drink and Catherine brings up the prenup to the friends. Now, one of the friends, the one that had the disheveled hair, she feels like that's a problem. And the other one who was more put together, she felt like, okay, well, maybe this is just because this whole situation is new. Thank you for using your common sense because I feel that way too. Again, like I said in my last recap, I don't feel like there's an issue with what Freddie was saying. Y'all are ultimately strangers who've only known each other for less than a month. Let's be serious. Sign the prenup or don't. But I don't really understand what's the big deal about that. One of the, the friend with the disheveled wig, she felt like it was a controlling move. Girl, please. Y'all after that man's money or what? So the friend with the disheveled hair, she said in the confessional that they probably wouldn't work because of their two different lifestyles. Well, there you have it. So then you have Freddie meeting Catherine's family. Remember, she's adopted. Freddie said that he 100% wants to get married. And he said that he is happy with his choice. But again, his body language is just saying otherwise. He's not really smiling that much. I'm really peeping how he is in these scenes. And Freddie just doesn't look like he is wanting to move forward. So her mom tells her to allow him some space to kind of figure some things out. Because of course she's panicking and she doesn't really know where his head is. And like I said, I feel like Freddie is going to say no. So then we move on to Bobby and Jasmine. And he's getting ready to meet her mom. Her mom is overprotective. 
and she plays no games when it comes down to her daughter. She's a straight shooter. She said as a kid, her mom would go through her call logs and if a boy picked up, then she would block the number. Are you okay? Like, what the hell? And then she said that she might say some hurtful things, but that's just her. Uh, no. And then she said that her mom is like an FBI detective. She reads body languages and all this stuff. I cannot stand an overly protecting and overbearing parent. As y'all already know, if y'all have been with me with my reviews, y'all already know I don't like that. I don't like it. It's too much. And I would, I feel like when you lay all of that stuff on somebody, it makes the person not like your parent right off the bat. Whether it be a parent, sibling, friend, when you tell them how hard they go, it's kind of like, okay, well, I'm prejudging you already. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to get along with your mama. But whatever. Uh, the mom gets there. She had her, ba uh, her uh, bandage dress on. I said, girl, what are those shoes? I didn't know what those shoes were, but her mom was cute minus the shoes. Um, the mom wanted to know what made Bobby choose Jasmine. He said that he wanted an honest, sweet person with the same values. And the mom is like, okay, well, I got mixed feelings about this whole thing. But Bobby really doesn't care because he sees them being together forever. So she asked about his past relationships, his education. He did not go to college and the mom is judging. She even had the nerve to say it's very difficult to communicate with uneducated people. That's not always true. Now, I'm not going to say that that's a complete lie, but that's not always true. So, we already know what type of time she on. And she's very judgmental, given time. And then, uh, she said that most men's perspective change when they meet a new woman. Very true. I agree with that. And she says that trust is gained and that she's had two failed marriages in the past and she doesn't want that for Jasmine. So they talk about possibly moving to London and maybe even abroad. And the mom is like, well, what about me? What about you, girl? You could come visit. Like, I don't really understand where, where you getting at because you're not coming with us. And the mom is like, yeah, I'm very involved in Jasmine's life. I'm her closest friend. I always told her, if you're going to tell a secret, you need to tell me before you tell them girls. Because I'm the closest person to you. Girl, I don't, I don't know, ma'am. She's too clingy. And I feel like maybe... She's doing that because of her failed marriages, which causes her to be dependent on Jasmine for her emotions and everything. I don't really understand it, it but it's, it's too much. So Jasmine says that she doesn't plan on telling her mom every single thing, which she should not because your mom does not need to know everything, especially if she has a judgmental attitude and you know how she's going to handle stuff. It's best that you don't tell her things because yes, if you and Bobby are having issues and then y'all resolve the issue, of course, like we already know, the mother is going to cling on to that and she's never going to let it go. So you have to be very selective in what you tell your parents when it comes down to relationships and stuff. Family in general and friends, hell. It go off to a room, Jasmine and her mom, and they get emotional. Her mom just wants her to be happy and she doesn't want her, Jasmine's children, to go through the same thing that Jasmine experienced growing up. And, you know, experiencing her family or her parents not really being that close and eventually divorcing. So we move on to Tom and Maria. His two sisters, they come and visit, and they're really trying to understand the process. So they bring up their disagreements. They discuss Maria and her expectations of a man in the beginning of the relationship. And she says that they went on this outing, basically this ice cream date, where she actually paid for the bill. And for her, she feels like that's a problem because you're supposed to be courting me. Why am I flipping the bill? This is ultimately our first date, and you can't even pay for a damn ice cream cone? Two scoops? It's definitely given what is going on. And so she didn't like that. Um, and the sister tried to make it seem like it wasn't a big deal. But for me, I feel like it is kind of a big deal. But I, at the same time, Maria, you didn't really mention the fact that you offered to pay. Because according to Tom, in the last episode when the Paw Squad all got together, he told Benaya that you offered to pay. So now you're telling his sisters the story and it doesn't sound like you offered to pay maybe you put you tried to put him to the test or something and he just failed i don't know but i do feel like yes it is an issue that that you didn't naturally reach down in your purse tom to pay her way and her home girl's way and sometimes your sister's way because like i don't really understand that and then she said that her dad and uncles are providers and so she's trying to figure out are you going to be able to provide for me and these kids that we plan to have What's tea? 
So I just find it very funny that Tom is just so judgmental. He has this like pretentious attitude at times and you know, he judges people for their occupations and all of this and like status and stuff. But paying the bills don't come at second nature to you. Confusing. So they talked about moving in together. They would go and live at Tom's house. And Maria said, yeah, that's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, I don't feel comfortable paying for somebody's mortgage. Because if we break up, then I didn't gave you all this money to put into your property. Felt. I understand that. So then they go dress shopping, and I really don't care about that. It really was annoying me. Everybody was putting on their dresses, getting all emotional. He's been this for me. He did that for me. I don't know. It just irritated me. And at that point, everybody is talking about the plans for the wedding day. So there was nothing else to discuss with that. So we're going to move on to episode 10 through 12. Um, and these are the wedding episodes. So let's go into it. So the women go out, and I was very mad at Demi for not wearing a dress. Girl, you look like you went to work. I don't know that. Why don't white, the white shirt with the white pants? I was like, yeah, no, girl. You're giving business casual, and I really was not feeling that. She also said, too, that she wasn't meeting Ollie's parents until the day of the wedding. So that's a lot of pressure. Now, Kat said that she won't walk down the aisle if she feels like Freddie is going to say no. Okay. And she said that she did ask Freddie if he was ready, and he said yes. So then the men go out and Tom is scared um, and he said that he's also kind of looking at everybody else and the great things that they say about their partners and at this point he's just kind of figuring trying to figure out if everybody is being realistic in their thought processes. Um, Freddie said that he can identify with that uh, because those are his thoughts too and he said that he wonders if they should just go ahead and take that leap of faith. So we already know that those two got a big question mark around whether or not they're going to say yes on the wedding day. So speaking of the wedding day, we get right into it. We start off with uh, Stephen and Sabrina. I was not feeling their venue whatsoever. It was like brown and yellow. It was very old looking and it did not mesh well with the wedding decor. Oh, no. So they say I do. And I already knew that they would. Um, it just kind of, they just gave that energy to me. So I was happy to know that they decided to stick together at this point. Now that y'all have said yes, it is time to really figure out where y'all are going to live. Because I felt like that was one of the things that they really didn't want to touch on until they knew that they were on the same page. So now that y'all are officially married and willing to move forward, y'all got to figure out if y'all going to be in London or Belfast. Uh, Steven looked the fuck good. Y'all already know that is my man, okay? Y'all can have Freddy, fine ass Freddy, okay? Because Freddy is fine as hell. The more I look at him, I be like, damn. You a handsome mother. And I feel like I keep saying that every time I see Freddy because we see him on screen more. He gets more screen time than Steven. But at the end of the day, Steven really is bae for me. That all, that white, that... The suit just looks so good on him. But when it comes down to Sabrina, the dress that she tried on when they went dress shopping, I wanted her to pick that. That's not the same dress. I don't know. Something about it I just really didn't like. And I didn't care for her hair being pinned back either. So let's move on to Tom and Maria. I love the decor for their wedding. The venue looked really nice. I think they were clearly at the same place. I don't know if they were in the same room or different rooms or if they even got married on the same days. I don't know. But it looked like a different room from uh where steven and sabrina was because it was more uh bright in there and everything just meshed well together with the wedding decor maria looked gorgeous i loved her hair i loved her outfit she looked really cute now when they get down to the i do's tom said i cannot and are we surprised because i already knew he was gonna do that i told y'all he said that he couldn't do it because of their differences and dipped baby when i tell you he was gone with the wind I said, uh, okay, you could have did that a little bit more graciously, but okay. I told y'all he was going to do that. And she said that she did want to get married, but she admits that it's probably what, it probably wasn't the best time for them. So then he gets in his confessional and he gets his reasoning as to why he feels like they could not get married. He said that she doesn't want to raise kids with the same values of on dating. He doesn't want his son to feel like he is responsible for paying everything and he doesn't want his daughters to feel like or to rely on a man necessarily. He wants a strong, independent woman. Okay. Tom, I, I mean, look, I always say 
50-50 is what you want to do, okay? It's all based on your household. I always say that. I have no problem. If it's if I, if if we got to do 50-50, then we going to do it. And if you want to pay the bills, then I'm going to let you have it. Like, it's just all based on lifestyle and what you can afford. But I just feel like with Tom and a lot of men, they are, I don't necessarily hear Tom screaming about, you know, traditional, traditional and all of that. But it just kind of brings me back to how a lot of men want women to be traditional women, cook, clean, do all of this for you. But you're not stepping into your traditional role of being a provider. Tom said, listen, I might be in PR, but it clearly ain't paying enough for me to buy ice cream, pay the bills, let you have two years off to take care of the kids. He said, baby, you're going to work. And I don't want to raise my son thinking that he got to be a provider, baby. He got to be 50-50. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not feeling him. I feel like, Tom, are you kind of broke? Because that's just how I feel. I'm like, how dare you try to judge somebody again for what they do for a living and saying you want somebody. I feel like he wants somebody who has a more socially accepting job. And then it's like, okay, well, since you all about occupations and stuff, do you make enough money to handle all of this shit on your own? But I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I just, I, I just feel like that's just bullshit. And I want to know what he, what it look, what his dating process looks like. Because if you can't understand courting a woman, and if you feel like that's an issue to the point where you don't want to marry this woman, I mean, don't marry her because y'all values are definitely different. So don't marry her. But it's just like, I'm a little worried. What, what do you, what do you expect when you're dating somebody? No, I don't know. Anyway, moving on to Demi and Ollie. She says that she has not heard from Ollie since they left that apartment. And at that point, that got her mind wondering, and she's thinking a lot. She's thinking about everything. She said that her heart and her mind are not aligned, and she doesn't know which way she's going to go. She doesn't know what she's going to say when she gets in front of him. And I was like, yeah, I would feel some type of way too, because why haven't you called me? Like, you keep talking about, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know. I don't know. Acting like you was going to be so sick without her. But then you haven't even called her or reach, her out, reach out to her. What sense does that make? It's not adding up. Even when her parents come into the room, she still has that same mindset of not knowing what she's going to do. So I'm like, ooh, baby, Ollie, it's not looking too good for you. So she gets down the aisle. And her dress and hair combo, I don't know. It just wasn't working for me. It looked like a lot of the women had the same dress on, the same lace. I don't know. It just lacked originality. And I was tired of seeing the same dress over and over again. So when it comes down to the I do's, Miss Demi hit a plot twist that some of y'all was not expecting. But I felt in my heart that she was going to say no. Because of the way that she was acting as she was getting ready, I said, she's about to tell this the no. And true enough, she said, I do not. She said, I know what I want in a husband. And Ali, you're not giving me what I want. She has gained a lot of, you know, self-esteem, a lot of confidence in this process. She's thank she thanks him for that. But she know her worth at this point. And what he's giving is not enough. Now, she said that this is not the end of the road for them necessarily. But she want to give them a little bit more time. Baby, when I tell you, Ali's mouth dropped to the ground. He said, oh, why not? <laughs> I said, oh, Ali, you was about to say yeah. He was about to say yeah. And I already said that I couldn't really trust Ali all like that. But it did seem like their their relationship started to progress a little better. I don't know if it's because they had sex with each other. I don't know. But he started to, you know, loosen up a little bit. But the fact that you did not call her, I feel like that made her think about everything. Made her think about how you were in the past and everything that you said to her basis once they got into reality and how he was all giddy and all of that stuff in Catherine's face and showing her all of that attention. Then right after that conversation, he just left her in the dust. And then when he was pressured by Jasmine and her overstepping her boundaries, how he was dismissive uh, and walked away from her, just all these things. I feel like those things in the lack of reassurance that he gave her in those trying times, it probably made her think like, mm, I don't know. 
I don't, I don't think I can do that. Nope, because I feel like the man for me would have did X, Y, and Z. That probably was her mindset. So he was looking and dumbfounded, but he said that the journey hasn't changed. It's just, you know, a slight different outcome. And he said that, you know, they'll get it together. I said, if he really cares about her, then he will put in the effort after this to make it work and really show up for her. So he said, he's talking to Aaron. Aaron is the dude who was a pod squad that I really don't, I really don't trust too much. I said, are y'all really friends? Like, did y'all know each other before the pods? Because this man then became his best friend in an instant to the point where he's walking down the aisle with him when it's time, to, he's a part of their wedding. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he said that he feels sad, but he's happy at the same time. He said that he wouldn't want them to get married and then there'd be all this turmoil and a bad outcome. I'm really proud of Demi for putting herself first. I really am. Um, I felt like I would not have expected her to say no prior to me watching her get ready for the wedding. Prior to, prior to the wedding, definitely gave Demi is going to say yes. As she was getting ready, I said, oh, baby about to flip the script. And she did just that. Proud of her for putting herself first. Moving on to Jasmine and Bobby. I was not feeling Jasmine's dress. I just wasn't. But anyway, they say I do. And which I felt like they were going to do. I knew Bobby was going to say yes. I felt like Jasmine was going to say yes. But her reaction kind of was like, ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Is she going to say yes, yes or no? She said yes. And I said, okay. And I'm also saying yes to her best friend. Her best friend, the, the chocolate melanated goddess, she is beautiful. And even the bridesmaids' dresses were very nice. I said, come on, bridesmaids. Okay. Even her mama was happy. And her and Bobby exchanged, I love you. So I said, okay, we, we making some progress. We gonna see once we get down to this reunion on how mama feel about everything. So now we get into Benaya and Nicole and their wedding. I said, their venue was very nice it was colorful it gave a tropical feel i said okay this might be the best one for me because it was just unique uh compared to the other ones i did not care for nicole's hair baby i don't know what i don't know i don't know you you slightly tiptoeing around soft life hard hair territories the only thing is but now it is a nomad with no set home and I don't know if he's going to necessarily give you the softest life. But girl, your hair don't be that hard. But it kind of give you don't know what to do with it. And I'm, I'm a little taken aback by that. They both say I do. And I figure so. But at first, her facial expressions had me a little worried. Like, Nicole, are you about to tell him no to? But she said, yeah. And I said, okay. That is what it is. I didn't like her jewelry either. And she was wearing her everyday jewelry. And I'm like, girl... I wear that bean necklace every day that y'all see me wear in my um videos and stuff. I wear that necklace every day. I'm not wearing that to my wedding, though. I don't know. Moving on, Freddie and Catherine. So he gives her with some jewelry paired with a note, and her friends is eating it up. And they're like, okay, well, he didn't did all of this. He definitely about to say yes to you, girl. Hi. So right before they get out there, Freddie's sister pulls him to the side and was like, look, y'all are not on the same page. Don't do it. Reconsider. Read some literature on the subject. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what his sister hit him with. And Freddie feels like, you know, Catherine trying to water down who she truly is for him, has him worried. And I'm like, look, the sister... Is right in her feelings, but girl, why you ain't tell him this yesterday? Why you felt the need to tell him this right before he walked down the aisle? So as Catherine goes down the aisle, I liked her dress. Her dress stood out the most for me because it was different. It was off the shoulder. It was uh, it had the foo foo at the bottom and all of that. It was puffy. It was cute. So uh, Catherine says yes. Freddie says I do not. No, it's an out for him. And he said that there were some things that they still had to work on. There were some mountains that they had to climb. And he just could not bring himself to say yes at the moment. So he hugs her. You know, Freddie being a gracious person that we know him to be on the show. And she was like, uh, yeah, don't hug me. So he said that with his sister, I feel like I'm yelling. His sister saying how she felt about the situation. That was something that he already was thinking about in his mind. And so it wasn't necessarily like his sister influenced him. 
Now he goes and sits with Catherine's parents and, you know, he apologizes and he says that he's, I think he apologized at least, but he said that he still loves her and he wants them to live together and figure some things out. And so he leaves them to themselves and the parents, you know, they respect him for coming out and speaking to them and, you know, saying how he felt about the situation. So then Freddie goes and speaks to Catherine. And she was like, yeah, I don't think I ever want to walk down the aisle again. Freddie still wants to be with her. But she was like, yeah, I don't know if it'll ever be the same. Like, she doesn't really know if she can bounce back from the situation. And that was pretty much the end of it. Now, I ultimately want Freddie to just leave Catherine alone. I don't really feel like she likes him all like that. She was so nitpicky. She was so caught off guard by him cheating in the past and all of that baby let her be and your feel you how you feel in your gut freddie is how you feel you feel like she's um high maintenance you also feel like she's trying to um cover up or water down who she really is just to be with you um it was kind of weird when i thought about it that she said that or she doesn't have a job and then she also has an issue with signing the prenup Maybe she's using you for your money. I don't know. I don't know how much money he has. I mean, shit, he ain't fixed the doors um, and put them on the hinges yet. I don't know if he has a lot of money or not. But it just kind of seems like, girl, are you trying to use him for some money? This is a stranger. I don't understand why you so in an uproar about him not wanting to spend uh, or give you his money or his assets as of yet. Um, Yeah, I don't know, Catherine. Now, you need to go ahead and be with somebody else because you ain't feeling Freddie y'all like that. If that's the case, I feel like she would have been a lot nicer. Um, with Demi and Ollie, again, I'm proud of her for picking herself. Uh, but also, I'm not mad at them for wanting to try things out, you know, once the cameras go down and see how all of that pans out, see if he really is into her as much as he claimed to be. We don't know what his answer was necessarily because he didn't say it, but just based off of his reaction, he did give me he was going to say yes. Um... Tom and Maria, when the reunion come around, baby, I would not be surprised if him and Natasha get together or if he reaches out to her after the fact. Um, who else? Everybody else are together. Jasmine and Bobby, I see them going the distance. I see Benaya and Nicole going the distance. I just don't know where the hell they're going to live. And Sabrina and Steven, yeah, they they definitely were the unproblematic couple of the group. Everything seemed really good for them. The true test is going to be them being long distance. So, yeah, y'all, I'm excited for this reunion. It comes out on Monday. I want to see what life is like after the cameras go down and what everybody is up to. Let's get down in the comments and talk, y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.